Welcome back for you. We're going to talk today about techniques for solving logarithmic equations. So our goal, I can apply various methods of solving logarithmic equations using the laws of logarithms. So there are three main techniques involved in solving logarithmic equations. So I'm going to go over them and then I'm going to show you an example of each and then we'll be done for today. Um, so, the first one is using the definition. Uh, we're going to use the definition of a logarithm and rewrite the equation as an exponential. Uh, and then we can use the various techniques that we did before for solving exponential equations, which we did by either equating the exponents by getting the same bases, or we took the log of both sides. Okay, so there's that. Um, the second one is first simplify using the laws of logarithms. So simplify is the key word here. And then rewrite as an exponential to solve. So then we're going to put them into exponentials again. So you got to remember what we did with exponentials a couple of lessons ago. And the third one is first simplify again and simplify. And then equate the arguments. So this is similar to equating the exponents in um, our logarithmic equations. This time we're going to equate the arguments of logs. And I'm just going to show you a very quick example of that. If I told you that the log of x was equal to the log of 4, you could logically assume that since these are both log base 10, that the answer that x is going to be equal to 4. That would be a perfectly good logical assumption to think that x and 4 must be the same thing since all other things are the same. Um, so that is the very simplistic example of equating the arguments. So example number one, we're going to use the definition to change into an exponential. So here we have log base 3 of this complicated thing. Uh, and I don't know what log base 3 of this complicated thing is going to be. It's going to equal 2, obviously, here. Um, but I want to get rid of the logarithms and see if I can only get some numbers in there. So remember that th what this actually says is if I raise 3 to the exponent of 2, I get the argument within the logarithm. So that means that if I take 3 and I raise it to the exponent of 2, I get n squared minus 3n plus 5. Now this is a much simpler equation to solve because I know what 3 squared is. 3 squared is 9. So 9 equals n squared minus 3n plus 5. And then I can subtract 9 on both sides and I get 0 equals n squared minus 3n minus 4. Now this you should be able to give to any grade 10 student to do because this is simply a quadratic equation. And you can solve this either by factoring or by subbing into the quadratic formula. We are going to do it by factoring because I can look at it and see that this thing factors nicely since it's a simple trinomial. So we put n's at the beginning. I know the signs are different because this is a minus. So I'm going to put a plus in one and a minus in the other. Uh, I know they have to multiply to 4, and since this is a simple trinomial, I can simply read this backwards. They multiply to 4 and subtract to 3. So that's 4 and 3, and since I need 3 negatives, I need more negatives than positives. So our answer here is n equals negative 1 and n equals 4. Now we're going to go back here and put a couple of little bit of explanation points in here because when you do something, when you use a law, you should actually say which law you're using. So in this case, um, it, and it's kind of the same as when you use a formula, you should always write down the formula or at the very least say which formula you're using. So here, this was strictly by the definition. So we say by definition, and this is short form for definition. Okay, by the definition, we can say this. Uh, this is simply simplifying, so we don't have to actually put that down. Uh, here we rearranged. Rearranging in brackets. And here we did factoring. And then here's our answer. So we say, therefore, n equals negative 1 and positive 4 from those brackets. 
Okay, so that one was pretty straightforward. Let's see what we got for another one. Simplify and then apply the definition. So we're going to simplify using the laws of logarithms. So what can we do here to simplify? Well, I've got two logs here. I could add a log to both sides, but that's not going to help me at all. Um, but I do know when I subtract two logs, I can actually change it into a quotient So of one log. So what I can do is I can pull this back into one log and say that this is the log of p plus 5 over p plus 1. And that's going to equal 3. And my reasoning for that is going to be because it's by the quotient law. So by the quotient. Whoa, that doesn't look like law at all. By the quotient law. Uh, now what do we do from here? Well now that I've got a single log on this side, if you've got a single log and you've got an exp and just a number on the other side, you can go back to your uh, definitions. You can say, okay, well, this is log base 10, because remember, if the base is missing, it's automatically 10. So that means if I take 10 and I put it to the exponent 3, then I'm going to get the argument here. That's just straight up the definition of logarithms. So I'm going to take 10, put it to the exponent 3, and I know that has to equal the argument, which is p plus 5 over p plus 1. And that is simply by definition. So that means a thousand has to equal p plus 5 over p plus 1. And then this is just a rational expression. Um, so I'm going to multiply both sides by p plus 1. So I get a thousand p plus 1000 equals p plus 5. And now this is just linear. Now, of course, we should say something about um, the uh, the restrictions on p here because we know that the argument of a log cannot be negative. It's got to be at least, um, it's got to be uh, greater than zero. Not even equal to zero. It can't be equal to zero. It's got to be greater than zero. So here uh, we know that p has to be um, bigger than negative one. And over here p has to be bigger than negative five. And if those things aren't met, then we've got a problem. So let's finish um, our answer here. I'm going to subtract p on both sides. So I get 999p. And then I'm going to subtract 1,000 on both sides. So I'm going to get negative 995. And p is going to equal negative 995 over 999. And so to think about that in terms of our restrictions up here, which said that we had to, um, that it has to be bigger than 5 and it has to be bigger than negative 1. So this is the, uh, this is the overlying restriction because if it's bigger than negative 1, it's automatically bigger than negative 5. This answer is just slightly bigger than negative 1. So it works. So we're all right. Um, next one equating the arguments. Now here we've got the same base and if we have the same base that must mean that the arguments are going to be the same as well. So if the two arguments are the same or if the two bases are the same the arguments will be the same we can just say equating the arguments arguments dot dot dot. Now remember this does not work if there's more than one log on one side. This only works. You can only equate the arguments when you have a log equal to another log. So here we've got 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 equals 2x plus 16. Now let's rearrange. I'm going to subtract x and subtract 2x and subtract 16 on both sides. So we get 2x squared um, minus 9x minus uh, 20 equals zero. Uh, and this thing, unfortunately, does not factor. Uh, so we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And since you don't need to really watch me do that, I'm just going to do it. 
So there we have it. Um, using the quadratic formula, we go through the whole process and we end up with um, approximately 6.1 and negative 1.6. Now it would be a good idea to plug those two answers into these two arguments to see if you actually get um, a positive answer because they cannot be below zero or they can't be zero. So just do a quick check. Um, checking for restrictions. Dot dot dot. Uh, we're going to go 2 times 6.1 uh, squared minus 7 times 6.1 minus 4, that turns out to be uh, 27.72, so that one's okay because it's positive value. Remember, the argument here cannot be negative. Um, you need to uh, check the other one with the 6.1, so you do 2 times 6.1 uh, plus 16 and honestly I'm not even going to bother to figure out what that one is because it's very obviously positive 2 times a positive number plus 16 so that one checks um, then you need to check the negative 1.6 so you do 2 times negative 1.6 squared minus 7 times negative 1.6 minus 4 this one's maybe not quite so obvious but if you take a look at it we're going to do 2 times um, something squared is going to give me a positive answer and a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive answer and so I've got all of these positives and this one is going to subtract 4 so if we just think about it logically uh, it's actually going to be a positive answer or you can plug it in and get 12.32 and see that it checks and one last go we got to check it in the last thing here because this has to be positive in both cases too for both of those things to make sense. So 2 times negative 1.6, 2 times negative 1.6 plus 16. Again, this one we can hopefully just look at and see it's going to be a positive answer because 2 times negative 1.6 is going to be negative 3.2 and when I add 16 to that that's going to give me a positive answer so this is all right too. So just doing a quick look and making sure that the arguments of your original thing because these things the arguments here what's in a log cannot be negative and remember the reason why that can't be negative is if I say the log of negative 3.2 what I'm saying is what exponent can I put on 10 to give me negative 3.2 and there is no exponent that I can put on 10 that's going to give me a negative answer. That's just not the way exponents work. If I have a positive base, every exponent is going to give me a positive answer. Even negative exponents. Remember negative exponents just flip things over and give me reciprocals. So that is why the bases cannot be negative and that's why we have to do a little bit of a check for the restrictions to make sure that these things are not violating anything like that or that there are no inadmissible answers if we use that word again. And we're going to stop there at the 13 and a half minute mark.